Well, it's official. Google's autonomous cars have the ability to cause accidents. Even worse, the first recorded accident at the fault of the Google vehicle happened to include it ramming into the side of a huge transit bus. So yeah, there's that. Okay, so first of all, the Google car was only going a few miles per hour and the bus it hit was only going around 15 miles per hour. So it's not like a bunch of people died in a fiery blaze or anything like that. The point is, is that something went wrong somewhere and the Google vehicle somehow managed to miss the largest object that could possibly exist on the road coming up in the lane behind it. For a better idea of how this accident happened, I offer to you the expert recreation done by Hollywood professionals. You'll take note here that an obstacle was in the path of the Google vehicle, so it was forced to merge into the other lane to go Get around away. it. When it attempted to merge, it rammed into the side of the bus, causing a large explosion and World War III. Now, of course, there are probably a thousand Google employees right now huddled around in a room somewhere trying to figure out exactly how the hell all of this happened, especially because there was a test driver in the front seat of this vehicle, and he even said that he saw the bus coming. I mean, you would think that with a new system like this, the guy would have pulled it back into the proper lane. But hey, that's just my thinking. Uh, maybe he just doesn't. I don't know. The battle continues between Apple and the FBI. Now, if you have no idea what I mean, the FBI has actually been trying to force Apple into unlocking an iPhone used by one of the San Bernardino shooters. Apple says no, while the FBI says yes, etc., etc. There's not really much else to say about that story, but I do bring it up because I want to know what you think about the whole should Apple be forced to unlock the phones thing. I mean, I get the idea that in some cases where national security might be at risk and the safety of the general population is in question, this might actually be needed. But but on the other hand, once you give the government the master key to all iPhones, what's in place to stop them from using it at will? The media is claiming that over half of America is siding with the government right now, and Fox News may or may not have anything to do with that. But I want to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. Protein-powered biocomputers might bring in the next next wave of supercomputing. Thanks to a team of researchers at McGill University, a new type of computing has been proven to actually work. And this time, it uses living cells to solve problems. The biocomputer has the ability to compute multiple things at the same time, where a standard transistor can only process one thing at a time. On top of that, it can be a fraction of the size, produce little to no heat, and use less than 1% of the energy that an electronic transistor needs to carry out a calculation step. I will link to the article in the description for you to check out and read more details. But if the biocomputer turns out to be as good as they hope, then the next supercomputer might end up being the size of a briefcase. And made out of brains. If you're one of millions of people out there who convert your Blu-rays to digital format on your PC, things might start to get a little bit more difficult for you. About a week ago, Sliced Off, who are the authors of Any DVD and Any DVD HD, has announced that they are no longer going to be creating software to crack and rip Blu-rays. While an official reason has not been given, an employee of the company has went to the forums and said that it's probably because a large amount of pressure has been given down to the owner from copyright groups and governments, and it's been going on for almost a decade. But the good news is that if you already own the software, it will continue to work. Mostly. While most DVDs can be ripped, some Blu-rays require the use of an online protection database to break the encryption. And if that goes online, then ripping Blu-rays with any DVD might be a thing of the past. So now I ask you, what software do you use to back up and convert your own Blu-rays? Let me know in the comments. A company named Terrafugia? Ter Terrafugia? is working on a prototype vehicle that they claim will be fully functional and flying by the year 2018. Now, the TFX, as they call it, will be driven just like a normal vehicle. However, it will also have two extendable propellers that come out of the side to lift it off the ground. Once it's in the air, it will be able to fly for 500 miles at roughly around 200 miles per hour. And it's also a hybrid. It uses electricity to drive around on the ground while using a regular engine to fly in the air. Now, of course, they are still working out a lot of engineering and design barriers to figure everything out, but I really, really want one. You know, just not version 1.0 or really 2.0. I'm gonna go with like 4.0, you know, because death. 
Thanks to Google, digital stalking is about to get a whole lot easier. A new artificial intelligence machine called PlayNet designed by them has the ability to look at random pictures and tell you where they were taken, at least to some kind of degree. They compare its abilities to that of a superhuman, although I don't know how you measure a superhuman, using around 91 million geotagged images to build the spatial memory of the PlayNet machine, it can now look for trends and visual cues that appear in photos. Then it can match those with other images to place their location. To test out the new neural network, they fed the machine 2.3 million photos from Flickr to see if it could guess the location. 48% of those it guessed directly to the continent, 28% to the country, 10% to the city, and almost 4% all the way to the street level. While it's not 100% correct all the time, it is still in its early stages. And when they put it up against some well-traveled humans, the machine was actually able to beat them 56% of the time. That's it for today, guys. Follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits. Like and subscribe below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.